Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here with our Saturday video where we traditionally look at uh, certain ships and we look at uh, commander skills in particular. Um, and from yesterday's video, we're going to be diving into uh, submarines, uh, the new ship class in World of Warships. Uh, so in yesterday's video, uh, I kind of I showed a battle on the a PTS ranked on the public test server in a ranked battle. There were some bots in it as well. Uh, kind of showcasing uh, the tier 8 uh, US destroyer, or destroyer, the submarine the Salmon. Um, now I've unlocked uh, the Below, Balo, I think is how maybe you pronounce this ship. Um, I'm going to go off English on that since it is an American submarine. And we're going to be looking at upgrades. We're going to look at the commander skills. Um, not just this ship in particular, uh, or submarine in particular. Uh, we're going to kind of look at what's going on with some of the German submarines as well. Um, I have four submarines currently unlocked, the Tier 8 American and German submarine, and then the Tier 10 American and German submarine, since it's just two nations uh, of submarines in the game thus far. Uh, I went ahead and moved uh, my commander that I've had on the Massachusetts over uh, to the below, since it is uh, kind of registering as a premium ship right now. Um, it's just easy to move it over with no fear of losing out uh, or having to pay a very high rate uh, for having to be master commander. So, the below. So, actually, let's. I'm kind of curious. Let's just look at armor real quick. 19 millimeter everywhere. That's what it looks like. Okay, 25 millimeter. So what does that look like head on? Okay. Vital ship part armor. The pressure hull. So then you have torpedo protection. Show fore and aft end armor. So it's 19 millimeter on the outside and then 25 millimeter here in the pressure hull. Interesting. So, um, let's pull up just some marines here, so you can see in port. Uh, I've got the, there's the tier 8 uh, American submarine, here's the tier 8 German, the U-190. Almost looks like they sit lower in the water, or is that just me? Uh, it's probably just because it's got a more f flatter surface, maybe. Uh, then there's your tier 10 U2501 in comparison to the below. I'm kind of curious just looking at the armor layout if it's just like all the same. 1919 25mm pressure hull. And what about the tier 8? 25mm. Yeah, look. Oh, 16. Right. Yeah, the deck. Is that the same on this? Did I just miss that? Yeah, I did miss that. Is that the same for the Americans? Yeah, it is, okay. So I missed that when I was looking over them initially. Below, 60 millimeter. That's nice, because like one of the things I noticed, I was firing at a submarine. I was in the Marcel in a co-op battle the other day. And farther distance and the shell arc is kind of coming directly down in on so if you get the distance and your shells come right in you're just penetrating the 16 millimeter uh, light hull deck armor okay so um i've moved my 21 point commander from the salmon to the below and actually we want to start with upgrades first that's what i was trying to do so you can see um right now we have 14,300 hit points, armor thickness of between 16 and 25 millimeter, uh, torpedo launchers located at the four, six, stern torpedoes, four, dive capacity, 450 units. Um, Mark 10 mod one, so our reload time of 10 seconds on our sonar ping, maximum range is 14 kilometers. Ping velocity above water, uh, 600 milliseconds or however that's going to be phrased as ping velocity underwater 600 ping width 18 meters uh number of loaders two of two 
Mark 29 torpedo, reload time 46 seconds, torpedo range 14, maximum damage 7,833, torpedo speed 89 knots. So that matches what we were looking at in the dev blog yesterday. Propulsion 5,000 for an 80 horsepower. Maximum speed 28 knots, uh, submerged underwater 29 knots. I don't know if that's actually real life historically accurate or not. In my mind, I feel like they would go faster on the surface of the water uh, where they have to move through a bit more things under the more drag, I would think, for it being under the water, but I don't know. Uh, so you have your armaments, your sonar, uh, your torpedoes, your consumables, you have the damage control party, and then you have the hydrophone, which we were kind of discussing yesterday. It shows the position of ships beyond the spotting range when underwater. So you pop this when you're underwater, not periscope depth ideally, but just a little bit under so you can see what's happening in your surroundings. And so it detects submarines operating and maximum depth. So a submarine, no matter how deep you are, if a submarine pops its hydrophone and you're in range of its hydrophone, you will be detected and spotted. Um, I was in a battle, I was on a, a destroyer, and I was just kind of booking along, and all of a sudden an enemy bot uh, submarine just popped up behind me like two kilometers away. So that was really strange. Uh, ship bearing, 6.5 kilometers. Submarine spotting range at depth, 6.5 kilometers. Interval between pings. 15 seconds. So it's kind of like this ping that uh, emits and it kind of, it goes somewhat sort of slow. And then the, it'll highlight the target. I think it's like for a few seconds and it goes away. At least it was that way for me on the public test server. Um, consumable action time, 45 seconds. So it means basically you're getting three pings, um, if I'm reading that right. So at the start, and then you get 15, 30, or maybe you actually get four pings if, that's, if they use it right at the beginning, right? Reload time, uh, 90 seconds, number of consumables, three. And then you have the enhanced rudder gear. So dive plane, or this increases the dive and descent speed and reduces diving plane shift time. So your diving plane shift time is decreased by negative 20%, which means it's faster. Your maximum dive and ascent speed is plus 20%. So if you were trying to get out of the way, you were trying to go dark or something, uh, you can pop this consumable. Consumable action time is for 30 seconds. The reload time is 120 seconds, meaning two minutes. And the number of consumables you get is two. So that's as far as modules, armaments, and consumables go. Um, now let's look at the upgrades. So um, the one they added is the sonar modification one. Uh, risk of sonar becoming incapacitated, negative 25%. Sonar repair time, negative 25%. If it should become incapacitated, in my time of playing thus far, I've not had my sonar knocked out um, and ranked on the public test server or um, here on the main server thus far. I have had my torpedo tubes knocked out. Um, I mean, ideally, like, you know, if you're surface and there's a ship uh, shooting at you, I mean, ideally, they're just they're shooting at you bow on, you know, if you're facing them because you're trying to get your torpedoes. So that puts your torpedo tubes uh, more at risk. Um, so for myself, I lean towards the main armaments modification one. Slot two, it's the, you get the damage control system modification one because your submarine can catch on fire. It might sound like funny or weird to think that your submarine could catch on fire if you're underwater, um, but fires on submarines, like if you're underwater, are super deadly, um, and not to mention flooding. Uh, engine room protection, this is really actually what you're gonna wanna go with. Um, because what this does is that the risk of your engine becoming incapacitated or your steering gears becoming incapacitated is reduced by negative 20%. And ideally in a submarine, you need your maneuverability to remain um, intact. So anything you can do to reduce the risk of being incapacitated is good. And if your engine or steering gears do get knocked out, the repair time is reduced by negative 20%. Uh, for slot three, you get uh, just two new ones. So you get the traditional um, torpedo tube modification one improves the efficiency of torpedoes and torpedo tubes. So your torpedo speed goes plus 5%. Your torpedo tubes traverse speed uh, plus 20%. So just when you're, you have your torpedoes popped open and you're, you know, trying to launch your torpedoes, uh, that will happen much faster. Uh, risk of torpedoes becoming incapacitated reduced by negative 40%. Um, and we, let's go ahead and pop open some of these things. I don't know actually how much I can open. Yeah, I can scroll. Um, you have dive capacity. Dive capacity depletion when detected by the enemy is reduced by negative 10%. Uh, 
So basically that timer that you get for how long you can be underwater, um, it lasts lot, like you don't take as much penalty because like when you do get de detected, your dive capacity gets depleted, but this just takes off 10%. Um, so you don't lose as much dive capacity. Um, dive capacity so far for me hasn't been an issue because uh, ideally you're trying to set yourself up where you're not being detected. Yeah, sonar modification two, your sonar ping velocity is plus 10%. So what is our velocity of our sonar ping? Yeah, 600, 10%. So then you're gonna go 660 MS. Um, what do I think about these? Well, I don't care so much for this one, if I'm being honest. Uh, I mean, once you get the hang of sonars, um, I don't really feel like I need a faster sonar ping. Actually, what I do when I'm playing submarines, um, except in the battle that you saw the other day, um, I started doing it afterwards, is when I'm starting off when all my allies, I actually, I'm just pinging my allies around me, but they don't know they're being pinged or anything, just as a practice. And it helps you get adjusted to how much you need to lead ships um, when in terms of the sonar ping uh, landing on them where you want them to. So I actually lean more towards the torpedo tubes modification one just because you get more speed out of them. So like uh, we were talking about that the other day. So let's see, torpedo speed, 89 knots. And if I add this on, 93 knots. Some fast torpedoes with less reaction time for players to uh, react to. You get the damage control system modification too. This accelerates fire extinguishing and recovery from flooding. Fire extinguishing time and flooding recovery time are reduced by negative fifteen percent. That's really more for battleships or like battle cruisers. Uh, I have propulsion modification reduces time to full speed and uh, reduced by negative fifty percent to reach full engine power. And then you have your steering uh, gears modification too. Rider shift time negative twenty percent. Diving plane shift time negative twenty percent. This really, I mean, so far in my experience of playing submarines thus far, like it hasn't been a big deal. I'm like, oh, I wish my rudder shift time was better or that my diving plane shift time was better. Um, more what I lean towards is actually trying to get out of danger's way. So like if you get detected on surface or let's say there's a, like you're sitting still, maybe you're reversing and all of a sudden you see the battleships uh, or crews recalled in anti-submarine warfare like plane strike. Um, and if you need to get out of the way, this kind of sounds a little bit more enticing to be able to get out of the way. That's just personally my opinion. Um, and then you have a uh, torpedo lookout system. Uh, that I really don't see this being important in a submarine. You don't, I mean, if you're beneath periscope depth, if there's torpedoes fired at you, you're not going to eat any. Like I've dived and dodged them before when you know a ship's firing at them at you or let's say a submarine surfaced and they're firing at you you can and you're underwater it's not a big deal ship consumables modification one uh, increases the action time of all ship consumables plus 10 percent and i don't really think that's useful then you have submarine steering gears modification three so your rudder shift time reduced by negative 40 percent your diving plane shift time reduced by negative 40 percent and your steering gears repair time if they get knocked out reduced by negative 80 percent so out of the three like yeah definitely take this because this does uh much more than what it does on slot five or four sorry um and you get to retain your propulsion so this i think goes quite well with this versus i mean you could have insane rudder shift time and diving plane shift time but um you know you get the best of both words when worlds when you go with propulsion modification one and Submarine steering gears modification three, in my opinion. Uh, six slot, you get uh, torpedoes, uh, torpedo tube modification two, uh, decreases reload time of torpedo tubes. So your torpedo tube reload time is reduced by negative 15%. And what do we say is 46 seconds for reload time? Yeah, 46. Um, but the risk of torpedo tubes Becoming incapacitated is increased by plus 50%, but keep in mind, we've we've thrown some things on to kind of help reduce the chances of torpedoes from becoming incapacitated, um, as well as improving survivability. Then you have dive capacity modification too. Um, your dive capacity is increased by plus 20%. So dive capacity right now is 450 units, and 
I don't know how they measure units. I'm required to stay underwater and maneuver at depth. Hmm. So I'm assuming if we took that, was that 20%? Then that's just going to be 20% times 450. And that's what you would get. Hmm. Actually, I lean towards torpedo tube reload time because now you're going to get your torpedoes firing off much more quicker. So instead of 46 seconds, we're at 39 seconds. So um, especially for the American submarines, as we were talking yesterday, um, they reload. Uh, they, like if you fire both of your, let's see, where is it at? Uh, your, your torpedo launcher is located at the fore end. Uh, if you launch them all, then... It, your each torpedo rack reloads sequentially. Um, so once one loads, it's completed. The second set will load. Once that's completed, then the third set will reload. Where in, in terms of the German submarines, their torpedoes actually reload sequential or simultaneously all at the same time. So you can dump all your torps, and they're going to reload uh, quicker. So you also get the hydrophone on the German submarines as well, uh, but then you get this reserve battery unit. So when the consumable is active, the dive capacity does not deplete. Okay, so it's like a pause on your dive capacity uh, consumable. So that's actually kind of nice. Where so then you don't get the where the American submarines get the enhanced rudder gears. Basically, that's another reason why I don't feel like, at least on the American subs, that you need the steering gear modification too because you get this little. Uh, dandy perk if you're needing it. I don't think the German subs are going to get any different upgrade options. I really don't want to spend more credits because I've decked out both the salmon and the below. And you can see I have now we're down to 20 million credits after dumping uh, several million into the below. So that's the difference that you have uh, thus far and kind of talking about them and looking at them. Um, you know, armor seems to be the same so far. Uh, so skills for submarines. So we have a lot of new skills. Uh, there's also some uh, olden goldies here as well. I'll just kind of go across uh, the different skills and then we'll maybe we'll look at an option of what you could take. Um, so enhanced sonar attack skill. This is a can be activated. So note there's like seven skills, I think, that are all can be activated skills, which means like even though if I click on it and master it, it only activates under a certain scenario. So this one is your sonar reload time is reduced if your ship is detected by the enemy. Sonar cooldown time is reduced by negative 10%. Then you have liquidator. So chances of causing flooding plus 30%. That should actually be pretty good for, to take. Uh, consumable specialist, consumable reload time is reduced by negative five percent. Don't know if that's that big of a deal. You have tried and true priority target. Um, before the commander rework, it actually was a one point skill. Um, after 10.0, it became a two point skill. So seeing it one point skill is uh, bringing some memories back. Um, but that could be helpful to have. And then you have incoming fire alerts. So if a salvo is fired at your ship from a distance of more than 4.5 kilometers, you get this little incoming uh, alert on the center right of your screen. So let's just, for example, say we chose that. Improved battery capacity attack skill. Dive capacity uh, increases plus 10%, but dive capacity depletion when detected by enemy is, oh, it's not good. It's plus 20%. Improved battery capacity. Dive capacity is increased, but your dive capacity depletion when detected is like it's a double whammy versus it just being normal. Eh, I don't know about that. Torpedo crew training. A can be activated skill. Torpedo tube reload time is reduced if your ship is detected by the enemy. Torpedo tube reload time minus 5%. So, yeah, but the problem is, is your survivability is not the best per se i would say in submarines like if you put yourself in a vulnerable situation where the enemy can attack you um sometimes it doesn't take much um to begin losing your health pool another can be activated skill helmsman uh helmsman uh, reduces rudder and diving planes shift time within 15 seconds of using the hydrophone consumable 
Reduces rudder and diving plane shift time within 15 seconds of using it. So basically, what they're saying here is like, yo, you use your hydrophone consumable, and this can be activated within 15 seconds of using the hydrophone consumable, and you get an extra buff to your rudder shift time and diving plane shift time. Ah, it's just weird. It feels like it's... Yeah, I think that skill is weird. Preventive maintenance. Uh, this also a tried and true one. Reduces the risk of the main turrets, torpedo tubes, steering gears, and engine from becoming incapacitated. Risk of modules overall from becoming incapacitated is negative 30%. So that's actually probably going to be good. And then you have last stand. If your engine uh, or your steering gears do get incapacitated, your ship is able to remain partially able to sustain speed and maneuverability. I would think that would probably be a good one to have as well. You have another can be activated skill increases the ping velocity if less than 25% of the maximum dive capacity remains. So in our ping velocity plus 15%. So it's kind of feel like these skills are kind of just encouraged. Some of these skills are just encouraging you to be aggressive per se. Like don't don't play passively. Be aggressive. Make sure you use your dive capacity up, um, and then you'll get these different skills activated. That's that's just what it feels like to me. Um, I don't know if I like that skill. Sonar man, duration of ping effect on a twice highlighted sector is plus 20%. Ping effect duration on a sector highlighted uh, once is negative 10%. This actually is probably not bad because when you get the double ping and it lasts longer, that's actually really good. Um, you know, originally your torpedoes went slower, so this would have helped, but now that you're, I mean, did help. And now that torpedoes are going faster, even, um, you know, after you get a double ping on a certain highlighted sector of a ship's hull, you might not even need to ping them again uh, when you take this. So I think that's that is worthy. Consumables enhancements uh, increases the action time for your hydrophone, uh, the, the steering diving plane one, and then your damage control party. Watchful. Defense skill. Displays a detection marker that the submarine is currently within the action range of activated enemy hydroacoustic search or surveillance radar consumables while operating in maximum depths. Actually, that one's probably pretty good. Um, displays. So, so it's, I, I think this what this is, is like, let's say if you're underwater and you're like, hey, I'm going to surface now then this watchful like hey like if you come up from maximum depth your depth you're going to be detected by radar or uh, hydroacoustic search so you need to stay under so it's kind of like an awareness skill i think that would be good to have uh superintendent number consumables uh you get additional hydrophone and the steering gear one to be honest i've not been burning through my consumables like i might use so far in playing submarines, I've only used like each of these skills once, maybe tw maybe twice in the battle. Um, so I I've not had the issue of running out of them. So I think I stray away from that. Uh, Do not rush is a four point skill. It enhances the ship parameters for each 1% of HP loss. So your sonar cooldown time is reduced. Your torpedo tube reload time is reduced. Your secondary battery reload time is reduced. Because some of these subs, uh, I believe, do have secondaries. I've watched some videos of some like firing like a, a turret, but like their accuracy completely sucks. We'll check that out in just a moment. Torpedo aiming master. Um, when launching torpedoes at a ship with a sector that was highlighted twice, torpedo damage is increased. The sector that was highlighted twice needs to remain active until the torpedoes hit the ship. Torpedo damage plus 15%. Ah. So that's on top of the 7,833. Yeah, so then add plus 15%. And I mean, you also have to take into account what the torpedo damage reduction is, uh, the belts on ships that you're firing at. But I don't think that would be uh, a good one to have. So we'll circle back to that. Uh, sonar expert, this is another can be activated skill, increases the ping effect uh, time on a sector if it is highlighted within 30 seconds of using the hydrophone consumable. So again, it's encouraging you to burn consumables. So, and you only get so many of those hydrophone uh, consumables. So, uh, 
ping effect duration of a sector plus 25 percent duration of a ping effect on a twice-sided sector plus 25 percent uh it's just it's i feel like it's in behavior encouraging you to burn through your consumables like oh that's what this one was yeah die improved uh battery efficiency i thought it was gonna be a dive uh capacity efficiency but improved battery efficiency so can be activated that capacity depletes more slowly if your ship is detected by me one less than 25 percent of the maximum dive capacity remains dive Oh, that's awesome. That's annoying. So yeah, another can be activated skill. So it's not helping you overall in like the whole scenario of the battle. That's why I don't like all the can be activated. Oh, like another can be activated skill. Increases uh, or an enlarged propeller shaft. Okay. Increases the underwater running speed if less than 25% of the maximum dive capacity remains. 25%, 25%. Speed underwater plus 15%. So this is kind of like... Um, the destroyer one is almost what it reminds me. But again, this it's like if you're so I think I feel like this is like when your dive capacity is up, wargaming is like giving you these skills to kind of help your maneuverability, your speed. Okay. Well, I like this skill. And then that leaves us with two skill points left. This is, uh, I would like this if it wasn't for the fact that it's a can be activated skill. Because essentially when you're detected, you're, you'll have the buff where your torpedoes are going to reload at negative 5% faster, which right now, keep in mind, is 39.1 seconds. So it's like... It's less than a two-second buff when you are detected. And then as soon as they leave, you're, de you're not detected, then you lose this buff. So I don't feel like that's worth it. I don't feel like this one's worth it because of your rudder shift time. And it's another can be activated skill. And I don't like being, I don't mind being detected in a submarine. Because like, for example, like, I think there's like the German battleships, like you can be detected by them, but they can't do anything because they don't have anti-submarine warfare. Uh, we can double check that. Because I was wanting to look at some lines because some... Some ships have uh, anti-submarine warfare and others don't. Like, I think actually Massachusetts doesn't have any uh, anti-submarine warfare, but Alabama does. And that's a can't be activated. Maybe? Because you're basically, you're not firing guns, but if you're firing... Like li trying to line up a torpedo drop, mm. it's the the doom beagle. As uh, gonna get back with him later. Um, then it gives you just a heads up about what's going on. Like if say let's say you're distracted and your focus your your dive battery is out like your first to surface and you're dumping torpedoes at a battleship and then let's say this cruiser farther off like eight nine kilometers away. And then it kind of lets you know incoming, like someone's targeted you. Uh, that might be good to know. So, but yeah, when you're comparing it to other skills, I just don't feel like they're as good. So I feel like this is what I lean towards. Because like, let's if I just take this skill off, like can be activated. One, two, three, four. five six seven yeah like what's the point of you can be activated skills like it's not as to me it's not a skill you've actually mastered it's when the stars and planets align doesn't end up working out for you I'm not saying it's not hard to activate some of them but it's just annoying so uh i would lean towards doing something like this i think if i'm being honest in my opinion yeah so then if we back out, then we're pretty much all kited up and good to go. Now let's just kind of look at some of the anti submarine warfare capabilities. So let's say tier eight and Massachusetts equipment. Okay, it doesn't. What about North Carolina? Uh-huh. Okay, so Massachusetts doesn't have it. 
the North Carolina does. What about cruisers? Baltimore, no. Cleveland, no. Oh, I'm stuck at tier 8. Let's just pop open cruisers. Uh, Wooster, no. Minotaur. Oh, you, get, you should have the depth charges. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So they get it to the all the whole light cruiser line. Uh, let's what about Alaska? Neither. <laughs> Des Moines? Neither. I'm not assuming Anchorage has any. No. New Orleans? No. Let's look at the tech tree. I heard something, I think, about the Japanese cruiser line. Which I'm have yet to go over. Uh, fire spotting. Yeah, so that it doesn't look like they have any? Question mark? Um, let's look at the German battleships. Because I don't think Kurfürst has any anti submarine warfare. Yeah, fire spotting. Because I've heard it's been an issue, like, in the Kurfürst, like, I mean, you could detect a sub with your hydroacoustic search, but like there's nothing you can do about it unless they surface or periscope depth where you can use your main battery guns or if they surface your, your secondaries. What else would be interesting? I'd actually be curious about the Borgon. Okay, so I do have that on the French battleship, so I'm assuming uh, da, 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 da. Like the Alsace would have it. And the Republic. Yeah. And what about the French cruisers? Just, just out of curiosity. No. Oh, so I was telling you guys the other day. Friesland. Friesland's really funky. People were wondering about this uh, for a while. But this is the anti-submarine warfare um, here. So depth charges. I don't have a camera to zoom in. Um, yeah, four, so eight, yeah. Two of these combined. But when I was using them, they almost looked like they could pivot. Hmm, when I was using this the other day, uh, I was going over a submarine and I thought it was going to dump off the back and I forgot about this whole setup and then they just started shooting off like from here to like up here. So that totally caught me off guard. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's go back to subs. So we're just kind of looking out. So I think, don't quote me on this, but I think more ships have more anti-submarine warfare capabilities compared to the first iteration of testing, like you go back to some rune battles and stuff. Um, Wargaming has given a little bit more counterplay um, to a certain extent, but at the same time, there's still, there are some ships that are, don't have any anti-submarine warfare. You just have to wait for the submarine dive capacity to deplete for them to be at um, periscope depth um, to do any damage to them. So, yeah. So I might have another video up. Uh, well, I don't actually. I don't know if I will. Uh, just showcasing because I'm kind of curious to test this out now. And this video has already gone over 30 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Um, but yeah, but when it comes to the submarine commanders, I feel like it's. Let's see, we did something. Yeah, like this is the type of build I lean towards going. Um, it's just, to me, that's what mentally makes sense. So you're not wasting points on can be activated skills. Like you're, you're getting, you're getting your money's worth uh, as a way of putting it. So, so yeah, so we've, we've taken a gander. We've checked the submarines out. Um, that would be what I, right now, what I'd recommend when it comes to the submarine commander skills for you to try out and kind of talking about some of the pros and cons of 
uh, certain upgrades and then the skills. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. And if you ever subscribed, uh, thanks and really appreciate it a lot. So until next time, take care.